stop spending thousands on software when you can get software for free. I'm here to tell you that if you've been spending thousands of dollars on the ArcGIS license and right now you're wondering if you should continue your subscription or maybe you're on the brink of purchasing the ArcGIS license, hold off until you watch this video. <laughs> A big mistake that I see a number of my clients make and people that are trying to jump into the field of GIS is they assume that the only GIS software available is ArcGIS. And yes, it is a fantastic software, but no, it's not your only option. There are myriads of GIS software out there that are available cheaper or even for free. So I'm gonna walk through four of my favorite cheaper or free options and go through specific use case scenarios, logic on why you may or may not want to use them. I'm also gonna walk through why you would perhaps need the ArcGIS license. And I also want to just note a quick disclaimer. I am not in any way bunking on ArcGIS. I love Esri, the company, and I've been to their international conference. I've even taught a Coursera course on Esri software. All that said, I still think that there's a number of people out there using a license that they never see the full capacity of. You're paying for a lot of bells and whistles when in fact maybe you just need a simpler and less expensive tool for the job. The first alternative that I'll be starting with is QGIS. QGIS is a software that has been around since the early 2000s and was a project initiated by people that wanted to make GIS and mapping open source. So it is entirely cost free and you can simply go look up QGIS and download whatever version is right for your computer. And from there, it has a very easy to use interface. So a primary misstep that I see a lot of companies making is they assume that because ArcGIS is the most well-known, that it is the only software that is going to be capable of solving their spatial analytical or data integration problems. And for students, I don't see enough students learning this completely free open source software. And I should mention that ginormous companies use QGIS and only QGIS. How do I know this? I worked at the largest company in the world and it is to just give you an idea. They use QGIS. If you are looking to do any sort of data integration, spatial analysis, and you're looking for something that's customizable, QGIS could be a very good option for you. Something that I should mention about QGIS that is a pitfall is that it is not as shareable as ArcGIS. So it is something where though large companies use it and they integrate all of those databases together, it's less capable in a real-time data sharing capacity, but that can be solved by integrating it with other software that I am just about to mention, Mapbox. What is Mapbox? Mapbox is an API that is used for web maps, interactive sort of data, and it is one of my favorite software alternatives to ArcGIS. And in a lot of scenarios, just given the prominence of geospatial integration into websites, a lot of my clients could ultimately use something like Mapbox rather than buying into the ArcGIS license. So a good example might be a real estate company that wants to showcase their properties and they want their customers to be able to see the statistics associated with each of their units and they want that to be integrated on a real-time basis. Something like Mapbox is a fantastic solution. Mapbox has a pay-as-you-go system, so this means that a lot of users aren't going to be paying much, if anything, depending on the demands of the website. If you're getting a certain amount of traffic or you need a certain amount of tiles, you're going to be paying as you go. And I see a lot of companies using ArcGIS for minimal functions, such as what I mentioned with a real estate company, 
depending on how many lots they have, they're not going to need that many tiles. And frankly, it does end up being cheaper. A major pain point with Mapbox that I should mention is that though it does not require that you have a deep knowledge of coding, it will be helpful to have some programming coding experience to be able to integrate these maps and do something beyond just a basic map display. So for real-time integration, you're probably going to want to look for somebody that is able to do some level of development. And for those of you learning, this is a fantastic burgeoning field. And I really encourage any of you interested to go check out the Mapbox website and look at all the tutorials that they have. They're plentiful, but I'm also hoping that more YouTube creators are going to be putting out more tutorials on the creative applications of Mapbox. And if there is a demand for it, I am planning on making several tutorials around this area. The third software that is lesser known and equally as awesome is Felt Maps. So F-E-L-T Maps. And this software is built for collaborative use. And it's not incredibly technical, but what it really does well is visual storytelling. So let's say that you're a nonprofit and you're doing a community-driven project where you want to be displaying, let's say, local parks or some natural resource that you want people to be engaged with. This is a great platform for you and your team to collaboratively integrate the data that you need while also making it a very fun and beautiful display for the public. The final software that I'll be reviewing is Google Earth Engine. Google Earth Engine is a cloud-based data sharing mapping platform that has one of the coolest features that I've seen on a GIS software altogether. And that is the animation function where if you go into Google Earth Engine, I believe that you still need to apply. So you give them your credentials and name and they either accept you or not, but it is free to use for non-commercial purposes. And something fantastic that I learned that was not a feature previously and is now is commercial opportunities to use Google Earth Engine. This means that you can take advantage of the cloud-based processing and super speedy data visualization services such as animation, as I was talking about, with whatever commercial or non-commercial venture you're planning on to pursue. Now, let's walk through the following case study to show you some of what I mean. Let's say that a company or a business or a study, a student, needs to monitor land use change over time. This has a fantastic function of loads of historical data to track and compare, and it can also handle huge amounts of data at a time, which compared to its cousins is a unique feature, so it's worth checking out. Let's talk about why you may, in fact, want to invest in the ArcGIS license. There are myriads of options of which license you can actually purchase, and also the price model varies on your use case, how many users you're going to be needing, and what tools you need. So if you are running more complex spatial analyses, there is no better tool than ArcGIS. Uh, I still use and love ArcGIS, so going through all of the other software, those are fantastic alternatives for the average user. But there's a lot of people that are still going to need the raster calculation services as well as 3D visualization. So let's suppose that a government agency is tasked with creating a urban planning strategy for a major city. In this case, because of the large scale nature of the project and the fact that they're going to need data integration from various departments, they're going to want people on the platform simultaneously. For this, ArcGIS is the right choice. If you're going to be running any sort of complex spatial analyses, there is no better tool than ArcGIS. I'm still a user and I frequently integrate this into my projects that especially concern government measures. If you need widespread integration, complex analyses, let's say that you're running a hotspot analysis 
Again, you're not going to find those tools on something like QGIS where you really need the powerful nature of something like ArcGIS Pro. So the question of whether or not you should buy that ArcGIS license depends. And whether or not you should learn ArcGIS, again, depends on who you're going to be working for and what your use cases are going to be. What I will say is that to learn GIS, to get your foot in the door, or to be a student and perhaps you don't have an ArcGIS license, it is completely possible for you to be learning this without having the standard software. Let's say that you're a small business and you're intimidated by the price tag of the ArcGIS license and you're not exactly sure if any of the functions that I just named apply to you. The smart thing to do would be to talk to a GIS analyst or somebody in the field that has some grasp on the different software and see if it's really worth investing all of that money into that license. A lot of clients, again, that I see don't in fact need it. There's cheaper options available and sometimes more precise for their use cases. So if you found this video helpful, please hit subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about the field of information design, that is visual storytelling that engages your audience and actually increases retention of the information that you're portraying to them. Let's say that even you're a student or a researcher just looking to present your information better. This is visual storytelling. And I'm gonna be covering the tools, techniques, and software that you can use to improve how you're getting your information across and how many people you're able to reach. So stick around for those videos and thanks for watching.